In the last video, we discussed how to tell whether a vector field F is conservative or not. In this video, we'll talk about actually finding a potential function, lowercase f, for a conservative vector field. We'll do this through the, through the example. Find a potential function, lowercase f, for the field capital F equals y sine of zi plus x sine of zj plus xy cosine of zk. This is the same vector field that we showed is conservative in the last video. Since capital F is conservative, capital F equals del F for some function lowercase f. <clears throat> so in other words, for some potential function, the vector field we're given is a gradient field. This means that capital F equals partial f partial x i plus partial f partial y j plus partial f partial z k for the potential function lowercase f. In other words, the i, j, and k components are the first partial derivatives of lowercase f with respect to x, y, z respectively. So this tells us that partial f partial x equals y sine of z, so the i component of my given vector field is the partial derivative of the potential function with respect to x. Now we'll do j components next. Partial f partial y equals x sine of z, and then k components, partial f partial z equals x y cosine z. So the lowercase f, keep in mind that's your potential function that you're trying to find. Okay, now to find my potential function lowercase f, I'm going to try to do the antiderivative of each of these partial derivatives. I'll start with the i component. So the antiderivative of partial f partial x dx. So I plug in my function y sine of z. So I have the integral of y sine of z dx, so with respect to x, is equal to xy sine of z plus some constant. But in this case, since x is the um, variable that we're actually treating as a variable, and y and z we're treating as constants, my constant that I add on when I do the antiderivative could be a function of y and z. So I get my xy sine of z plus g of yz. So g is some function of y and z. And so far, that's what I have for my potential function f of xyz. Now I'll do the j component part. So I know that partial f partial y equals x sine z. We determine that above. So I take the f that I found in the last step and do the partial derivative with respect to y of x y sine of z plus g of y of z. So we don't know what that g of y of z function is, but we want to take the partial derivative with respect to y. So I get x sine of z plus partial g partial y. Now notice that x sine of z is exactly what we want partial f partial y to equal. And so that leaves us with partial g partial y must be zero. That means that g is not a function of y, it's at most a function of z. So now we have f of x, y, z equals x, y sine of z plus h of z, where h is some function of z. And now, we, now we'll do the k components. 
So we have partial f partial z equals xy cosine z. That's what we determined initially in the problem. And I want to take the partial derivative with respect to z of the function I found in the last step. So partial, partial z of xy sine z plus h of z equals xy cosine z plus partial h partial z. Now notice xy cosine z is exactly what we want partial f partial z to equal, so partial h partial z must equal zero, which means that it's just going to be a constant function. So putting all of that together, we get our potential function is f of xyz equals xy sine z plus c, where c is some constant, arbitrary constant. So your steps, just to review, initially you do the antiderivative of partial f partial x, which would be whatever your i component is of the given vector, and then you use that along with your j component to determine if you need to add on a function of y and z. And then you use that result along with your k component to determine if you need to add on a function of z. And then of course make sure you're adding your arbitrary constant at the end. And then to double check what you need to do is you have your f of xyz, take the partial derivative of this with respect to x, with respect to y, and with respect to z, and that, will, that should come out, your gradient of f should come out to be your original given vector, capital F.